Welcome to the Engineerable channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to hardwire the Starfire unit on the Gel Blaster Starfire or the Surge so that the UV LEDs in the Tracer unit can run off the internal batteries. As you can see, the Starfire unit is wired into the blaster and there are no batteries in here. And you won't be wasting any more of these AAA batteries, which are annoying because it's very easy to activate this unit and make it glow which end up dying quickly if you don't remember to pull them out after you play because this button is so easy to press that they'll activate and stay on. And since there's no auto shut off, it'll just kill the batteries. To do this mod, you're gonna need some kind of connectors like these JST PH2 connectors. These work perfect. You're going to need a three volt voltage regulator. This one is 3.3 volts. Luckily, the UV LEDs are typically rated about 3.2 volts. And this is designed to work with two double A's, which is three volts and since it also has an onboard voltage regulator it can handle a little bit more than three volts but it can't handle the five volts that's coming out of the front of this blaster or the 7.4 volts from this battery this voltage regulator will drop any voltage higher than 3.3 volts down to the 3.3 volts it's not as simple as just being able to use a resistor to drop the voltage from the main battery power on the blaster you can use a resistor for a single led but here we got four leds and there's already a voltage regulator, so it's expecting a certain voltage input and using a resistor won't work. So that's why you need a voltage regulator. And these are extremely cheap to buy. They don't cost much more than a dollar a piece. You're going to need some wire cutters and strippers, soldering iron and solder. If you need an inexpensive soldering iron, this thing's only about $12 to $14. Check for the link in the descriptions and see my other video about that too. And you're going to need some heat shrink. A pair of helping hands like these DIY ones I made will make it a lot easier to solder. All the links for the parts you need and the tools are down in the description. So the first thing you're gonna to need to do is take apart your Starfire unit. And I've already done this in another video, so you can go check out that other video if you need help. This is what it's gonna look like when it's taken apart. This is the core module. And so these are the main battery contacts. This is the negative, this is the spring, and this is the positive contact. You can see the red wire, and over here is the black wire. And these are the two places where I'll be soldering the connector. The wires with the connectors that you'll be using they have a female end and a male end. This is the female end, has the two little holes, and this is the male end. It's got individual pins. The red wire, the positive side, is gonna be soldered to the positive terminal on the side where the red wire is already. The black wire gets soldered over to the opposite side, the negative terminal. I'm going to route the wires in the space under the fins, so they'll all be hidden. And so if I look at where I want to route it, I want to make a cut right here in the Starfire unit where the cables are passing, and I want to make a little cut in the gel blaster body right here. I'm adding a zip tie where these two wires come together as a strain relief. So now I'm going to put the electronics assembly back into the Starfire unit housing. So I put this green cover on first. There's two pins that fit into these two holes. It goes right here. Slide the other side of the cover back on. You want to make sure that your contacts are straight so that they seat properly in there. If you care about ever being able to use batteries again, put the battery cover back on. Just stretch this out a little bit. Okay. Snap the cover back over the opening. And then put these screws back in and tighten them up. That's it for the Starfire module. So now let's hook it up to the blaster. The next step is to disassemble the blaster. So take the fins out, take this front end off, and use a number one or number zero screwdriver that can fit in here to undo all these screws. Take note that there is one screw that is shorter than the others. That screw goes here in the trigger guard. To make this mod really simple, I'm gonna go ahead and use these wires that go to the contacts in the front 
because this provides five volts that turns off automatically when the blaster goes into standby, so it's gonna save electricity. And I have yet to see any accessories that fit in the tip and use those electrical contacts. So maybe there's gonna be some in the future, but for right now, I don't care about those. If you want your blaster to be future-proof in case they ever use those contacts, you could just solder additional wires to those contacts or tap into these wires and use that power. There's actually plenty of space for the circuit board to live right next to the barrel inside there. Now I'm going to solder the female connector wires to the 3.3 volt voltage regulator. So this is the output minus side. And now the output positive side. I'm going to desolder the contacts from these wires and pass the wires through the holes in the circuit board. So the red is on the positive side, input, and the black is on the negative side, input. Before I hook this up, I'm going to test the output voltage. I'm going to turn the blaster on full auto. So I'm getting 3.283 volts, which should be perfect. Let's see if this fires up the Starfire unit. It does not like it. Instead of staying steady on, it's flashing. It doesn't mean it won't work, because the flashes might be enough. It turns out that using the voltage regulator on this line that goes up to the front contacts that I measured 5 volts on, and the voltage regulator is not connected to it, is not working that great, because it doesn't seem to be a constant voltage line, or it's not able to supply enough current to keep the voltage regulator happy because the voltage drop seems to be too high. Here's what's happening. I'm getting an average of 3.75 volts, max of about four. When I measure with a voltmeter, it measures a little bit more like 4.4, but uh, the output right now is 1.1 volts which is powering the LEDs, but that means that the voltage regulator is not working properly. So what's interesting is if I turn it on and off, then sometimes I can get it to, see if I turn off the LEDs, then the voltage regulator is working, 3.3 volts, and the input to the voltage regulator is like 4.64, but when I, as soon as I turn this on, it, well, this time it's working. Okay, so now it's flashing, and the voltage regulator is outputting the 3.3, 3.3 volts and the input is about 4.48 so now it's working but it doesn't always work like that I covered the voltage converter circuit board in hot glue to protect it from water damage and also to add a strain relief to the cables if this voltage converter were being maxed out it would produce a bit of heat, so this may not be the ideal solution if you were maxing out the current, but the current use is very low, so it's producing almost no heat. So now it seems that as long as I leave the Starfire unit switched on and I turn the blaster on, the power for the LED starts off low and then it ramps up. I'm going to take this voltage converter module that's been covered up with glue now and stick it under here, behind the barrel. You want to make sure that it doesn't affect anything with the barrel. And it looks perfectly fine. There's plenty of space back there. And I'm going to cut out just a little bit here for the cable to be able to sneak out. Probably cut a bit much and bent. And cut a little bit more on the other side of the housing. I just have to make sure that all the parts are in place, like the trigger's back in place. This hopper feed neck tube is back in place because that tends to pop out. The switch is back in place. So everything's in its spot. The wires are all routed properly. And I can go ahead and put the other cover back on. And put all the screws in. Remember that short screw fits in the trigger guard. Now I'll take the modified Starfire unit and slide it on top. Make sure no cables are pinched. Connect the connectors together. Tuck them in here. 
push this cable as far back as it'll go because the fins are going to kind of push it down and put that front piece on and then put the fins down over it. Okay, everything's locked in place. Now I'll turn the lights off so you can see the UV better. Okay, so if I turn the blaster on, so the blaster's on, and the Starfire unit is off, then I turn the Starfire unit on, it's going to flash. Even though it's flashing, it'll probably still light the gel balls up just fine. But watch this. If you leave the Starfire unit on, turn your blaster off, turn it back on, then the LEDs light up and glow like normal. Firing does not affect the glow of the UV LEDs. The nice thing is if you leave the power switch on and the blaster goes into standby mode after about a minute, then this also goes into standby mode. And you have to pull the trigger or turn the switch on and off to reactivate it. Here it is in single fire mode. One thing to be careful of now is that you or someone else doesn't try to just like pull the hopper back. Well, it's not really going anywhere because the cable's holding it in place. If you're worried about messing up the wire by accidentally trying to remove the hopper, you can leave a little wire loop there and it'll give you a little bit of slack. So that's it for modding the Starfire unit to wire it into the gel blaster so that you don't have to use AAA batteries in here anymore. You still can use AAA batteries, but you're going to have to disconnect the connection to the blaster if you're going to do that. Now the nice thing also is if you turn the blaster on with the Starfire unit on, then you can turn the Starfire unit off and on and it still stays bright and doesn't flicker. So that's a really nice feature for keeping this switch operational. As you can see, the Starfire unit is wired into the blaster and there are no batteries in here. Now let's check out how well it works at night. 